don't be shy about getting water in your paints. Plenty of water in them. If you end up running out of one of these colors <clears throat> at some point, not necessarily in the middle of the demonstration, come to me like before or after class or towards the end of class and say, hey, I'm about to run out and we can probably get you a replacement color. I'm going to get a whole bunch of yellow first. Make sure you don't mix your blue and your yellow or you're going to get green. It doesn't seem no matter how much you mix up, you probably should have had more up in that upper part. Before we go on and start painting, I'm going to suggest that you, after you get enough paint in your upper tray, I'm going to highly recommend that you go rinse your cup out and get some clean water so we don't stain that yellow in any way, shape, or form when we go. Okay, before I set any paint on my painting itself, I'm going to check on my test paper to make sure my yellow, I can actually see it, and it's not too light. I'll put some on there. That's pretty light, so I'm going to put just a little more paint in it. That's why I test. And that's better. I can clearly see it. I set my test paper aside. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this skull right in half, and I'm just going to use my paintbrush to do it. I'm going to just come right down that nose. I'm just going to put a dividing line all the way down my page. It doesn't matter if it's absolutely perfect. It's just got to be pretty close to the middle. Now that I've decided that, I'm going to come over here. And on this case, I'm going to do the left side of my painting all with this light yellow. And I'm going to go really fast because I just want to cover this area quickly so I don't have a line right in the center like I do right now, I'm going over the entire left side with this yellow. And there's no monkeying around or wasting any time. You gotta kinda get right after it. This is not the time where you sit there and take little teeny paint strokes like this. You gotta just go to town on it. Because if you don't, you wind up getting really splotchy looking uh, background on it. You don't want that. You want to try to keep it as even as you can make it. It's not going to be perfectly even, but it will be not even at all if you go slow. There's sometimes in watercolors where you go 100 miles an hour and sometimes where you go super slow. This is the 100 mile an hour time. wonder why I have my paper upside down so that I don't have my hand rubbing on my paper while I'm doing it. Paper might curl a little bit on you. That's to be expected. We're putting a lot of paint down. Right now I'm just looking for any areas that look a little lighter than the other areas or any areas that maybe I missed. When you're going this fast, it's pretty easy to miss a spot or two. I'm pretty satisfied with that. While that's still wet, I'm going to get my orange paint wet. I'm not going to mix this up necessarily in the upper part of my tray. I'm just getting it good and wet. And I'm going to come along this outer edge over here with it. I'm going along the outer edge. fairly quick, hoping that it's still wet enough that it will blur out a little bit. I don't want to get too close to my skull. So I'm going to bring it a little bit towards it. It's important that my paper still wet while I do this. And my 
paint's still wet. Otherwise, it won't give you quite the effect that you're hoping for. The effect we're hoping for is kind of a blurry, fuzzy orange. My paper's starting to get a little too dry. I'll just put a little more water on there. What we just did there is that wet and wet technique. That's the first color on it. It's wet and wet. It blurs out. I've got a little spot I don't really like right here. I'm just going to pick it up a little bit. Fine. And then I'm going to get my red. And I'm going to do the same thing but not go quite as far in. Coming in with a little bit of red here, bringing it out into my orange a little bit. Now note that I went from my lightest color to my darkest color. So yellow was the lightest. Then we came in with orange, which is your medium color. Now we're coming in with red. We're having to go quick because we want to get it on there before that paint dries. And I know I'm going super fast, but I, there's just no slow way to do this. gives it kind of a cool effect. And I notice I had a little bit leak inside my skull there. That's okay. Just take paper towel, pick it up. It's all good. Don't have to worry too much about that. I've got a little whitish looking, so I'll take just a little yellow and go back over it. Still trying to bleed in it a little bit. Now, if a little bit of that gets into the skull, it's not a huge deal because we are going to paint over a lot of this. Right now, I'm going to let that dry just for a minute or two. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I'm watching it dry anywhere. I have places it's puddled up really big, like right here. I'll just take a paper towel, just barely touch it, go back over it with my brush a little bit. I notice I got some yellow edges here. I want those gone. So all the way at the edge of my paper, I don't want any yellow showing. Anywhere I got it puddled up, Barely touch it with the paper towel and pick it up a little bit. Overall, that looks pretty good. I can live with this no problem. And it should look kind of like a cloudy, misty atmosphere in the back.
Now, if your whole paper's turned into one big red mess, that means you got too much red or too much orange on there and you didn't leave any yellow. So you'll know in a heartbeat whether that applies to you or not. So if that happened to you, be a little more stingy with how much dark color you put on there when we do the right side. Before I do that right side, I'm going to clean my water out again because now we're going to stay with cool colors on the right side and I don't want any of those warm colors mixing in my background. We'll have probably just enough time to try to get the blue done, and it'll probably be time to clean up. So, you guys got behind in the beginning. It's you're just I don't know what to tell you. You're gonna have to just get caught up. It's all being recorded. You can watch the video later and catch up after school or something. But it's one of those things that once you start, you're committed, and you can't really dawdle around at all on this. Looking at my blue and thinking I need just a little bit more. So I'm getting ready to do my blue now and I'm going to do it the same way. But I wanted to make sure that my uh, warm colors had dried along this edge first. 
Because the last thing I want to have happen when I put this blue on here is have it bleed into that yellow. So I'm checking it. Feels pretty dry. I think I'm going to let it dry for one more minute, though, before I do this. Because it makes me nervous. I really don't want it blow, uh, bleeding into the left side of my skull here. So just with your finger, check along there and make sure that that's dry before we start. If you're way behind, of course, it's not going to be dry. But. I'm just waiting for a second. While I'm waiting, I'll go ahead and try my test paper and make sure my blue is the color I want it to be. Yeah, that's pretty good base blue. That's good light blue. So I'm not going to have to change anything about that. Literally watching paint dry for a second. I guess now is as good as ever to try to commit and do this. So before I start, I'm going to take just a little bit of water on here. Oh, I still got a little blue on my brush, but that doesn't matter because we're going to go all blue. Just getting a little bit of water on there so my paint will spread faster. Now I'll go back and get my blue paint. And just put it right on there. And we're going to go from light blue to begin with to a dark blue darker blue to a purple. But for right now, we're just trying to get this light blue all the way up and down. Make sure I don't leave a little white gap at the center line. If it overlaps slightly, that's better than leaving a white gap. One thing I don't like about these watercolors is they're not super expensive, nice watercolors or just what the school can afford watercolors. And they will dry kind of somewhere between blue and purple, even though you're just putting blue on your paper. It's kind of a weird thing. I'm just getting some water on there so it'll spread faster and more even. And I'm getting on here and going to town. Notice I am not taking my time. I am going very, 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 very fast. I can't emphasize that enough. It's not the time to sit there and take little timid brush strokes. Now the only thing I'm doing right now is making sure I got it all the way to the edges want any white showing through on my edges. It's really good and wet still. And I'm going to come in with my darker blue, just like I did with the orange. This time I'm going to use a darker blue, so I'm going to come straight out of my tray. And when I put it on there, it should bleed out. It should grow on the page, so to speak. If it's not bleeding out on your page, that's because your paper got too dry on you. You need to get some water back on there. It should be abstract like this. Now, everybody look at the screen. Don't put your blue on here going like this, putting paint strokes. Don't do that. You're just touching it down on the paper and bringing it back towards the edge, okay? And it's not like little teeny ones like this. I mean, I'm literally putting my brush down on the paper and letting the water bleed out from it. I'm not really even making strokes. I'm just kind of touching it down, kind of dotting along, but big, heavy dot type strokes. Uh, if I could have 
a minute. We are here to celebrate. I'm here with some of your board members and we'll be out visiting classes and congratulating students and teachers and staff on the excellent performance this school had on state assessment this last school year. Uh, Beaver High is a standout school. Get your purple you know, wet while you're listening to him. In so many him. ways and you're doing it academically as well as with athletics and everything else. Uh, we're being recognized uh, for our achievements in then go in with uh, your purple sorry i gotta talk while he's doing that for a second because uh, you want to do it while it's wet we've got more than a year's growth from our students uh, meeting the state average so you you are showing as students that you're able to learn more here at beaver county school district in a year than they do in most places in the state of utah so keep up the great work uh, we've got a special treat for you at lunch uh, there'll be some brownies in the cafeteria. Make sure you stop by and grab your brownie as uh, you get lunch and things. And thank you for all your hard work, staff and students, and congratulations. Well, that's good news. Congratulations, guys. And you're doing something right. Okay, so when you're done, you should see light blue, medium blue, and purple when it's finished. So I'm not going to demonstrate anything beyond this today. I think this is enough, maybe even too much for some of you if you were behind. But I'm just going to leave that up there. I'm going to let it dry. I'm kind of watching it as it dries. I'm watching for places that it puddles up. If it gets too deep a puddle somewhere, of course, I'll pick it up with my paper towel. I'm looking for an area that doesn't look quite right, like right here. I'll fix that. Actually, bring that all the way up. You should have got watercolor on your table as you're doing this because you're painting right to the edges. When we clean up in about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, make sure you wipe your tables down good. For now, I'm just going to kind of monitor this and watch it. And you need to kind of do the same thing. And then just make sure you don't have any white spots or places that you missed. Just gonna let it dry because it's pretty wet. 